Hello dear kids, let's begin with a new lesson that is fun with magnets. Have you ever played with something that appears magical? Something that is able to mysteriously attract another object or push away another object? Yes, so then you must be knowing what I'm talking about. We are going to learn more about this mysterious property of these objects which are called as magnets. In this lesson, we will determine which objects are magnetic and which are not. You will be able to classify objects as magnetic or non-magnetic materials. You will be able to observe that magnets have two sides, that is the north and the south, and their names. You will also be able to list the properties of magnets and predict the results based on them. Every story has a beginning. So when were the first magnets discovered? The history of magnets is believed to have begun in Greece from a person called as Magnus. The Magnus was a shepherd and he lived in a village called Magnesia in northern Greece. One day while he took his sheep for grazing in an open pasture, he was carrying a rod which was made of metal. He noticed that it was be difficult for him to pull his rod out once he placed it on certain kinds of rocks. Also, the iron nails which held his shoes together also got stuck onto this kind of strange rock. which looks something like this, this black rock, is made of a material called as magnetite. So Magnus found that the metal tip of a stick and the nails of his shoe stuck to these kinds of rocks. What is magnetite? It is a natural black rock which has the attractive property which are associated with magnets. So magnetite is a natural magnet. It was later also called as lodestone. The meaning of lodestone as leading stone. Can you guess why magnetite was also called as lodestone? A strip of lodestone or magnetite, when it is allowed to move freely around like this, when you hang it onto a hook and then when you allow it to move freely around, it was found that the same end of that strip would always point towards the north or the strip would orient always in the north-south direction. And this was very useful for navigators to find their way around the seas. So, lodestone meaning leading stone was another name given to magnetite. Now, what do magnets do? Magnets can attract certain materials. Magnets can attract certain materials. Examples of magnetic materials which we have already learned in grade 5 are iron, nickel, steel, cobalt. We have the mnemonic. I can see Nick to help you remember this. So remember that not all metals but only certain metals are actually attracted towards magnets which is why we can safely wear gold or silver and go through a metal detector. Do magnets attract all materials? Take a look at these pictures. Can you find out the kind of materials which would be attracted to magnets? Yes, I will give you a few seconds. So when you filter them out, you understand that the metal instrument box, the lock, a knife made up of steel, keys as well as the metal spoon are all objects which can get attracted to magnets and the others which were made up of plastic or rubber or glass and other such material are not attracted to metals. Even metals like gold and silver are not attracted to magnets. 
magnetic materials are those materials which are attracted towards a magnet the names magnetic materials are usually made up of iron steel cobalt and nickel non magnetic materials are those materials which are not attracted towards magnets if you've played with magnets you must have come across magnets of different shapes these magnets are definitely uh, artificial magnets or man made magnets so they come in different shapes and sizes depending on upon the way in which they are supposed to be used so let's take a look at some of the common shapes in which magnets come now let's take a look at the names of these magnets the first one is what we call as a horseshoe magnet it's also called as a u magnet when the poles are closer to each other that is when we call them as a horseshoe magnet otherwise it's otherwise called as a u magnet and then you have the classic bar magnet this one is what we call as a circular magnet and uh, the last one is a ring magnet also called as a disk magnet now how can we make temporary magnets we just took a look at some magnets which are man made right that means we can prepare magnets uh, can we make some magnets on our own at home the answer is yes so let's take a look at the methods which can be used very easily to prepare magnets so the first method that we're going to take a look at is the stroking method the materials required for this is a regular bar magnet the north and south pole of which we already know or are marked all commercial magnets which we buy from the market already have their north and south poles marked or the north pole is marked using a dot the red color always indicates the north pole of the magnet so other than a bar magnet you will also require an iron nail or a needle or any other magnetic material it should be magnetic material that is it can be made up of iron steel nickel or cobalt so the procedure is pretty simple you have to use one pole of the magnet here the north pole of the magnet is being used to stroke along the length of the magnetic material several times how many times maybe 30 to 50 times so this will take a good 5 to 10 minutes for you to do you have to keep stroking it in a single direction so you can see that the magnet has to move along the length of the needle and then it has to be lifted at one end and then placed once again at the uh, first end and this has to be repeated several times and when the procedure is completed when you have done it enough number of times the end from where you began the stroking action will develop into the north pole of the magnet and the end opposite end would develop into the south pole of the magnet remember that you are stroking with the north pole of the bar magnet if you were using the south pole of the bar magnet this end would have been the south pole and the opposite end would have been the north pole okay after doing it enough number of times the needle will start behaving like a bar magnet and it will be able to attract magnetic materials this nail is now able to attract these paper clips the second method is by creating an electromagnet so electromagnet has the word electricity in it so this has something to do with the use of passing of an electric current to create a magnet so uh, for this you require a certain setup you require batteries you require an insulator wire and then you require a magnetic material which can once again be an iron nail or a needle made up of magnetic material so what you have to do is you have to coil the wire around the nail and then you can connect either ends of that insulated wire to both ends of the battery when the circuit is closed that is the both the ends of the wire are connected to the positive 
and the negative terminals of the battery, the electric current which is stored in the battery would flow through the uh, coil, through the wire, right? And when that happens, when that happens, this nail starts behaving like a magnet, right? So the moment the circuit is open, that is if you disconnect the one of the ends from the battery, then the mo then the iron nail would not act like a magnet at that point of time. So as long as the circuit is closed, it will act as a magnet. And when the circuit is open, it stops acting like a magnet. So this is an example of how a temporary magnet can be made and there are very strong electromagnets which are made and which are used for many applications in our daily life in industries okay so you can take another look you can see that the wire is wound around the nail and when the circuit is on it acts as a magnet when the circuit is off it stops acting as a magnet and it cannot attract the paper clips anymore so that's how electromagnets work. This is a simple model, but the ones which are used in industries, in cranes, for many practical purposes, they are really huge and very powerful electromagnets. And the most important thing is that these are temporary magnets. As soon as the electric current stops flowing, they stop acting as magnets. Right? So we, let's recap what we have learned in this video so far. We have learned about natural and artificial magnets. Natural magnet is magnetite, also called let's lodestone or leading stone. And we learned about different artificial magnets which come in different shapes and sizes and their names. And we also learned how we can prepare some temporary magnets. We learned about magnetic and non-magnetic materials. Uh, we learned how we can prepare temporary magnets by the stroking method as well as by creating electromagnets. Take a look at a quote by John C. Maxwell, some food for thought. But the law of magnetism really is true because not only do magnets attract magnetic material, but also you tend to attract people who are like you. Isn't it? If you look around your friend circle, if you look around you, you will see that you are most attracted to people who are more like yourself, who you can relate with. Right? Okay. So then I will see you in the next video, dear children. Keep learning and have fun learning.